Hi, in this particular video we're looking at the kind of question that might appear towards the end of a non-calculator paper. Now the reason it's going to be non-calculator is because we've got to recognise a couple of things. The first thing is, is that we've got to recognise that it's going to be the cosine rule that we're going to apply and also we've got to know the cosine of 60 degrees. Now just a couple of notes before we actually start. First thing is, is that you wouldn't necessarily get the text square root of 73, you would probably get the square root sign 73, and you wouldn't get 60 degrees, you would get 60 degrees like that. It's just, this is just how I wrote down this particular question. Okay, the second thing that you need to be aware of is you need to know that it's a cosine question. Now, the only way of doing that really is knowing by uh, just working through similar sorts of questions that if you've got an angle, and in this particular case, three sides, all of which have got so at least some relevance to x, then we're able to use the cosine rule, which is going to be a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. Okay, and what we're going to do today is take the information that we've got, plug it into this particular formula, and then hopefully find a way of calculating the value of A. Now, there is quite a lot of working out, so I'm actually going to work down the page. Okay, so the first thing is A squared. Well, this is A, capital A, and opposite to that is lowercase a, and that's just common convention for how we label the sides and the angles of a triangle or any shape. So this would be b and this would be c. It doesn't really matter which way round we have those. Okay, so taking the information that we've got from the formula, a squared then is going to be the root of 73 squared. Okay, that's going to equal b squared, which is going to be x plus 2 squared plus c squared which is 2x minus 3 squared minus 2 times b which is x plus 2 okay I don't really like writing that okay because it looks like 2x so I'm going to make that into a dot okay and then I've got c which is going to be 2x minus 3 and then I've got the cosine of 60 degrees. Okay. Right, so we've got all the bits of information that we need, and let's now start working this through. So the first thing is, I'm going to relieve the root 73 squared as just simply 73, because the two cancel themselves out. Then I've got x plus 2 times x plus 2. Okay. And I'm going to add that to 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. OK, then I've got 2. Now, the interesting thing here is I've got 2 times something where the cosine of 60 degrees is actually a half. So I've got 2 times a half, which is going to be 1. OK, so I don't really need to worry about that. But what I do need to be concerned about is this minus sign here. This is the minus sign that's going to cause me a little bit of a problem in here if I'm not too careful. But I can certainly get rid of the 2 and I can get rid of the uh, cosine of 60 degrees. OK, so let's put this x plus 2 times 2x minus 3 into square brackets and that just reminds me that this half uh, this minus is going to affect everything within those brackets okay so let's now start working through each of these in turn so i've got x plus 2 times x plus 2 well that's going to be x squared plus 4 x plus 4 okay happy with that no problems at all OK, the next little bit is going to be this. So if I multiply this out, I'm going to get 4x squared minus 6x minus 6x. That's going to be minus 12x. And then minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9. OK, so we've dealt with now this, which is this one here, and this, which is this one here. And then the next bit is to deal with the things in the square brackets, but I'm still going to leave them 
in the square brackets and that's going to be 2x squared and that's going to be minus 3x plus 4x is going to be plus x and then I'm going to have plus 2 times minus 3 is going to be minus 6. Okay, so it's starting to look a little bit tidier now, but as we work through, we should find that this will give us some sort of equation that we can then factorise or we can deal with. So what I'm going to do is gather up the like terms. I've got x squared plus 4x squared is going to give me 5x squared. I'm just going to write 73 in there to remind me that I've got that 73 in place. And then I've got... Um, plus 4x minus 12x is going to be minus 8x, okay? And then I've also got plus 4 and plus 9 is going to be plus 13, okay? That's minus, again, just being very careful here, the things that are in the brackets, um, I have to now multiply out by the minus sign. So it's going to be minus 2x squared minus x plus 6. Okay, so be very, very careful about those. Okay, so well, let's start gathering this all together now a little bit more. Well, I've got 5x squared minus 2x squared is going to be 3x squared. I've got minus 8x minus x is going to be minus 9x. Then I've got plus 13, plus 6 is going to be plus 19, okay? But I've also got to remember that I have a 73 there. So actually now, in order to factorise this, I need to make sure that it equals to 0. So if I do that, I bring the 73 over and I've got 0 equals 3x squared minus 9x plus 19 minus 73 is going to be minus 54, okay? So, we're now in a position where we've got something that we can factorise, and it is a quadratic equation. The difficulty is going to be is how do we actually factorise this? Well, I think there's a couple of different ways in which we can do this, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, divide through first by 3, because if I do that, I'm going to get x squared minus 3x, and 3 into 54 is the same as saying 3 into 54, which is 1, 2 left over, 3 into 24 is 8, okay, so that's minus 18. Okay, and then I'm looking for two numbers that when I multiply them together are going to make minus 18, and when I add them together are going to get minus 3. Well, the two numbers that spring to mind from minus 18 would be uh, minus 6 and plus 3. Okay, hopefully you can see that, that those two numbers, when I multiply them together, make minus 18, and when I add them together, make minus 3. So I can write this now as x minus 6 multiplied by x plus 3, and that equals 0. So at long last, I've got my two values of x. My first value of x is when 0 equals x minus 6, so therefore, x equals 6, okay? My second one is where x plus 3 equals 0, therefore, x equals minus 3. Okay, now the question is, find the value of x. So I have two values, one is 6 and one is minus 3. Now, hopefully you can see that the only value of x here is going to be 6, because if I said the value of x was minus 3, then this number wouldn't actually exist. It would be minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1. So this would be a minus 1 measurement. So actually, with these types of questions, the only value that would work for me is going to be plus 6. So therefore, x equals 6. Okay, I hope it's been helpful for you. I hope you found um, it not too complicated to work through. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. Uh, subscribe to the uh, channel and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.